Warning, the following video while edited for YouTube contains subject matter that some viewers may find upsetting. Viewer discretion is advised. I want to begin this video by saying I have no issue with religion or people of faith. Christian, Sikh, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, Jewish, Catholic, it does not bother me at all. But that's not what we have here. No, what we have here is a con man disguising a scam as a religion, and that does bother me. This is the story of Peter Popov. Peter Popov is an infamous televangelist who began preaching in 1960 at the age of 13 and rose to prominence in the early 1980s with his vigorous sermons. I tell you from now on you're going to have a song of victory in your heart. His claims that he could communicate directly with God. God told me. And heal the sick. Burning this arthritis right out of your body. It's unconfirmed, but it's also believed that his dad worked at Nintendo and could beat up your dad. By the mid-1980s, Popov's ministry had expanded to the point where, and get this, he was receiving substantial amounts of donations to purchase Bibles, balloons, and helium with which he could float said Bibles into occupied Germany and the USSR. I know, it's wild, right? Popov, by virtue of his operation becoming so massive and making extraordinary claims, would draw the attention of the skeptic community, and in 1986, the hero of our story would hit the scene a man by the name of James Randi. James Randi was a former stage magician, illusionist and mentalist turned skeptic who would investigate psychics, spiritual mediums and faith healers exposing them as frauds, publicly pulling their pants down and humiliating them in front of the masses. If you claimed to have supernatural powers, there was one man you didn't want turning up to your shows and that was James Randi. At a San Francisco show in 1986, Randy and electronic surveillance expert Alec Jason along with a small team would attend and begin their investigation. After concluding their investigation, Randy would present their findings on The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. The results were shocking to say the least. Hello, Petey. Can you hear me? If you can't, you're in trouble. Popoff was being prompted by his wife through a wireless earpiece. John? Johnson. She'd gotten her information from prayer cards filled out by the faithful before the show began. That's right, not only was God not talking to Popov, he couldn't heal the sick, and most shockingly, his dad didn't work at Nintendo and couldn't beat up your dad. It's also alleged that Popov's wife Elizabeth described an audience member to him as that big N-word in the back. Again, allegedly, I couldn't find a recording of this. If I did, I would have just chucked it up on Twitter and Reddit and called it a day. There'd be no reason to make this video, but if it is true, it gives you a pretty good sense of what these people are really like. After being exposed, Popov would deny the legitimacy of the recording, claiming it was not his wife and a forgery. A month later, he would change this statement, telling the LA Times that he used the device about half the time, but he also denied that it was kept secret from his followers. Yes, that is a thing he actually said. I don't see anything wrong with that if you don't. Popov would soon disappear from TV broadcasts and in 1987 would be forced to file for bankruptcy, with his ministry having unsecured debts of over $1.1 million, or approximately $2.9 million when adjusted for inflation, and his personal unsecured debts totaling over $400,000, or approximately $1.1 million. My friends, I cannot tell you how much I desperately want to be able to say and he faded into obscurity, never to be seen or heard from again, and have that statement be true, because things get so much worse from here. Flim Flam is his profession. That's what he does best. He's very good at it, and naturally he's gonna go back. After disappearing from the public radar, it's hard to tell what Popov was doing. All reports indicate that his ministry continued operations just on a smaller scale. How he was able to do that, despite the bankruptcies, we can only speculate. Perhaps he got part-time work in Vegas as a professional Elvis impersonator. We may never know. However, what we do know is that in 1998, he would resurface in the public eye by purchasing time slots on the Black Entertainment Television Network, attempting to rebrand himself for an African-American audience. This action would draw criticism from many, with Jeffrey Haddon, a professor at the University of Virginia who studied TV evangelists, telling the Washington Post, it's a serious ethical question for BET President Robert Johnson, a network that pats itself on the back by saying it serves the black community, 
ought to stop selling time to people who take advantage of them. This criticism would not be enough as Popov would continue buying time slots on the network and by 2003 his organization would receive over $9 million in donations, a number that would seem small by comparison when just two years later it would receive over $23 million. With Popov and his wife receiving a combined salary of almost $1 million and two of their children receiving salaries of around $180,000 each. It's impossible to tell how much Popov and his ministry are making now, as in 2006 his organization would make the switch from a for-profit business to a religious non-profit by merging with a tiny storefront church in Farmers Branch, Texas. When he was asked why an international TV ministry based in California might merge with a tiny church outside of Dallas, Popov stated, our board of directors felt it was in the best interests. These interests being, now that they're a religious non-profit, his ministry would no longer be required to disclose its annual income or its salaries to the IRS. In 2007, Popov's ministry would purchase a $4.5 million home in Bradbury, California, listing it as a parsonage, making it tax exempt. During an interview with GQ magazine in 2017, when asked about this, Popov would state, it's now worth 10 million, so I made the ministry 5 million. Sorry, but I'm pretty sure that's not how that works. You kinda need to sell the place for it to make money and he still lives there in 2023. Hey guys, Editing Seder here. I just wanted to clarify something. He is actually now selling the home for around $8 million. Uh, he listed it in the middle of February. So he's gonna get 3 million instead of 5 million that he was bragging about. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention that. Anyway, back to it. In 2009, when upgrading from his Porsche to a Bentley, it's alleged that in documents related to the purchase, Popov listed his monthly income at $100,000. But how was he able to achieve all this? Well, my friends, it's time to talk about what is possibly the longest running confidence scheme in history. I'll never be broke another day in my life. Call the number on your screen and ask for the Miracle Spring Water and the Anointed Faith Tools. It will be the most important step you take. Live debt-free with the Miracle Spring Water and the Anointed Faith Tools. Miracle Spring Water. This stuff will fix any ailment you have, whether it be physical, mental, or spiritual. Hell, it'll even get you out of debt if you have enough faith and pray hard enough. And now in December, they'll be taking him off all the medication. Here's so he's totally healed. I've been getting $16,000. I've been getting $15,000, $5,000. Hallelujah, so I give God praise. As per his infomercial and all the reports I've seen, you will receive this amazing product absolutely free. However, you will also receive a letter asking you to tell Popov your problems and asking for seed money to kickstart your miracle because God ain't working for free. These letters come in various shapes and forms but are essentially all the same. Bible verses taken out of context, tell me you have cancer, give me your money. So what happens if you do that? Or if you don't, either way it's actually the same. Well, the good people at truthinadvertising.org and several YouTubers found out the hard way. It's already too late, they have your mailing address and you will continue to be bombarded with letters always asking for more money. It's important to note here that Popov isn't asking for donations to his ministry, he is asking for money to manifest a miracle for you. Now let's take a step back and analyze this for a second. Person A, in this case Popov and his ministry, makes contact with person B in the form of his infomercial promising a huge reward. Person B returns contact by ordering the miracle spring water. Person A then begins to continually harass person B, saying their reward is coming, they just need to send more and more money. If this pattern of behavior sounds familiar, it should. You've probably seen it in your email spam folder. Popov is publicly running the Nigerian Prince scam, which you may know as an advanced fee scam, the 419 scam, Jamaican Lotto, Spanish Sweepstakes, Long Distance Love. It has a bunch of different names, but at its core, it is always the same. Now, you might be thinking, all religions are a scam, you friggin' moron. Not true. This is the Adra website, a charity organization founded and operated by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Yes, they do have running costs that some donations need to go to, since religious organizations don't really have revenue streams outside of donations. But you can see where the rest of the money goes. Building wells and schools, getting doctors to people who otherwise would never be able to see a doctor. 
disaster relief. They currently have boots on the ground in Turkey and Syria after the February 6th earthquake. Now if we take a look at Popov's website, it consists of six tabs, all of which are either trying to get your mailing address or get you to donate directly. They feature Bible verses heavily taken out of context or not even quoted in full, just shoved into his argument. My personal favorite is this one. Yes, Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. John 10.10. 10. If you take a look at John 10.10, 10, it actually says this. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. That's okay, Peter. I get why you wouldn't want to have the word thief in the fourth paragraph of your homepage. But at the end of the day, the question is just how successful is all this? Very, obviously, but for a more in-depth look, we need to turn to former employee Crystal Sanchez, who worked in the mailroom processing donations and claims that in one day, she counted $30,000 in donations just from letters she personally opened. She had 19 letter opening colleagues all going at the same pace and raking in an estimated $600,000 and further states, I was astonished at how much I was actually counting. Now remember, this is just cash and checks. Sanchez recalled a time where Popov's letters began to encourage people to send in gold and silver items they owned. I wanted to check out if this was true, and yeah, sadly it is. Place your gold or silver items in the bag provided. Verify your address. Oh, what, he wants me to send him gold or silver items? He thinks I'm poor and have AIDS and have gold and silver lying around. Sanchez stated that people were sending in heirlooms and that you could tell they were very old. With the stones removed and the gold and silver melted down, Sanchez alleges this stunt made $2.3 million, with which they would buy and furnish an entire new building, complete with throne-like offices for top employees. While melting down family heirlooms for profit is a completely scummy thing to do, it somehow gets worse when you add this detail. The letters people send confessing their problems? Sanchez claims no one reads them. The valuables being cash, gold, checks, whatever, are taken out and then the letters are shredded. No one remotely important even looks at them, and certainly not Popov, which is a fine how do you do. Give us your nan's wedding ring that she smuggled out of Germany during the war, we'll melt it down and not give a single crap about you or the problems you have. This scam has cost people hundreds of millions of dollars. I would even go as far as to say billions given how long it's been going on for. But money aside, there's another cost. This scam ruins lives. I just look back on it and think, you know, I'm a pretty stupid person. And the kid came walking over to pass by us, and his parents were behind him, weeping copiously. The father saw me, and he took me aside, and he said, we've been to five of his healing services now, and he always puts us behind the rope. And we drove 800 miles today to be at this service. And the little man with his crutches, he, he waved to his father. He said, we're going now. It would be easy to label the victims of Popov as delusional, ignorant, or downright foolish for giving anything to this fraud but that's not what they are. They're desperate. And when we are desperate, we are at our most vulnerable and hope becomes a very dangerous thing. Kathy Rowe and her disabled husband, Donald, fell for Popoff's pitch. Surely God would see our pain and bless us. They borrowed thousands of dollars from relatives saying they were going to pay their bills, but instead they sent it to Popoff, $4,500 in all. Kathy Rowe, the lady you met, says she only stopped sending Popoff money two months ago when she had no money left for food. I want to reiterate that. This couple were borrowing money from friends and family, claiming it was for bills, but were giving it to Popoff in hopes of healing and only stopped because they had nothing left for food. That is the level of desperation we are talking about. In 2001, when both of Carol Bercier's sons were diagnosed with serious illness, she was desperate, and upon seeing Popov's infomercial stated, I saw him talking to me, straight to me, like he was, he was just telling me exactly what I was going through. So of course I called. I called right away. Over time, she would stretch her incredibly tight budget to give Popov around $500, praying for a miracle. 
one that sadly never came. This would leave Bercier extremely disillusioned, and she would go on to state, it was going to be a miracle. He was just gonna heal, like that, both of them. Didn't happen. She now believes the man she had so much trust in used her faith against her. More distressing is the story of Steve Lyles and his father, Vernon. Vernon had been diagnosed with cancer, and eventually, desperation set in. He began sending money to Popov. Sadly, Vernon would pass away, and this is where things become heartbreaking. The letters didn't stop. We're still getting letters for this guy to have money sent to him for my father, so my father can be cured. Sending letters to a deceased man claiming that for just a bit more money, he can be cured only for his son to have to read them is absolutely disgusting behavior and does seem to support Crystal Sanchez's claim that no one reads the letters you sent to pop off. They just get shredded. There are so many more cases of people being taken advantage of by pop off. If I were to go through all of them, we would be here forever. But that is what he does. He's a vulture of misery and suffering that takes advantage of people's desperation and vulnerability in their weakest moments, exploiting their faith and belief, promising them everything, only to line his pockets and leave them in a much worse position, smiling as he does it. You're next in line for a miracle. With everything we've talked about, is Popov going to stop? Not on his own, no. Why would he? He's been conning people his entire life and getting away with it. Remember the story about the Bibles and balloons? Yeah, I couldn't find any evidence of that actually happening. I did, however, find multiple sources alleging that when Popov was questioned about what happened to the money, he staged a burglary at his headquarters and began begging for more money. So if he isn't going to stop on his own, is this video going to stop him? Hell no. I'm just a jackass on the internet with a microphone. Even if this video blows up to a stupid number of views, I am far from the first person to cover this. Conwatch, Eve Blog 2, Anomaly Documentaries, Dr. Todd Grande, Illuminati, Joe Rogan, Super Eyepatch Wolf, the main man himself, Mr. Moist Critical. Didn't see anything from Pyrocynical though. Come on mate, get it together. Even Djibouti Dubs is making fun of him. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? I love the young people. Hell, you want more? Look at the links to my sources in the description. Damn near every news outlet you can think of is there. Even Inside Edition took a shot. But I don't think Popov cares. He's been cancelled before and came back. If the way he shields his water is anything to go off, he really doesn't care. On his website, it clearly states, do not drink the water. Yet in his own promotional material, he has his little group of paid actors claiming they drank the water and were either healed or got money. My husband brought the spring water up and I drank it. And I'm speaking today, I had no speech, totally paralyzed, and now I'm testifying. Get the spring water, drink the spring water, or whatever you need to do with it, it really works. So if canceling him won't work, and he isn't going to stop on his own, what will stop him? That's a difficult question to answer, but in my opinion, education and awareness. That's why I made this video. If I can reach someone who is currently or thinking about giving money to Popov and show that, yes, while he may be a minister, that doesn't necessarily mean he has your best interests at heart, I'll be happy. If you're a Christian watching this and you're having trouble telling if someone is a fraud, I would recommend this table that I found. It seems to be a very quick and easy way to determine things in line with your faith and it's backed up by scripture. Speaking of which, it is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. Matthew 21 verse 13. You see, Petey, I can put Bible verses into a narrative too, only mine aren't taken out of context. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I want to say a special thanks to the patrons. I say patrons, there's one, but it's a $5 one, so thank you Joseph. And by the way guys, sorry this video took me so long. I was working on something else, then made the switch to this in early, mid-January, something like that. Next one won't take so long. I'm already working on it, but I'll keep you guys up to date on Discord and stuff. Socials are in the description. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.